Hi, I'm Paul Salmon, I'm a spiritualist medium. My guest today is medium and author, Leo Bonomo. Hi Leo. Hi Paul. The old friend of Eternal Spirit. Yes, and nice to be back. Well. Yeah. We spent some time together last week, mm. and we won't go into that, but a pleasant <laughs> day. But <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but when I came home, I had a text message from a lady, Greta, if she's watching, in America. Yes. Mm. And she's a medium, and she said, oh, you, you do the rooms, so you do this. I said, yeah, that's interesting. And she said, you just spent a day with a man who does trance. Yes. Oh, oh she's a good medium. She's really good. Mm. And she said he could teach you quite a bit about trance. So, Leo, you're going to teach me? <laughs> <laughs> but no. Well, in the time we've got allocated, but... Right. Yeah. Um, tell me about your trance, because we haven't gone into that much. No, it, it's something that um, spontaneously kicks in when I teach, because uh, I'm a development teacher, and I've been teaching on and off for about 25 years. Mm -hmm. uh, so it kicks in spontaneously at those times, and uh, I generally get a little warning uh, when that's going to happen and it tends to be pertinent to whatever's going to happen in the circle that night. I never planned circles. Oh, so it's not a case of, right, tonight we're doing trance? Uh, sometimes we do, um, but, but 99 times out of 100 we don't. And what happens is um, that uh, a guide will just come in and they may have a favourite subject. So we might be doing um, paper reading um, or the ribbons or something like that and a guide that has an interest in that will sometimes just come in and talk about that and aspects of it. So how does your trance manifest? I mean the people in your company, have they, what have they said about you? Does your face change? Is it? Um, face changes on occasion, yeah. um, usually not. Uh, with that it tends to be fairly deep. Um, my voice does change. Uh, it changes when I teach as well, and it depends on, on who comes in. So there are various um, people that will come in. Mm. Um, so that's it in, in circle. Um, I sometimes go into trance for readings, and that's usually if there's a lot of information that comes through, I feel myself slipping. Right, so if I sat with you, for instance, <coughs> is it possible you might just go into trance? Yeah. Right, for someone who doesn't know, that if they come to see you for the first time, yeah. isn't that a bit daunting? Um, it is. I usually will get a warning. And what I do, uh, because uh, again, the word trance uh, can freak some people out. So I just tell them I'm going to go into a different mode. Mm -hmm. And what I do is um, just just uh, let them know, take a few seconds mm -hmm. to... Uh, to allow that person in and usually the information will come a lot faster a lot more detailed mm. and uh, I don't remember readings anyway but with um, trance um, I'm completely out of it so oh, yeah. I just I'll ask them you know whatever was said was that okay yeah. I've, I've been overshadowed <coughs> in the past <coughs> but if I sat that with you to teach me or someone else teach me yeah I think God oh, what, what's the cut-off bit that I actually disappear and that's what daunts me a bit, you know? Yeah, um, for trance you do need to have a lot of faith. Oh, I've got um, faith. Oh, no, I don't, mean, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't mean uh, uh, faith in, in that you can do it, but you're placing an awful lot of trust in uh, the, the guide that's coming in. Mm. So there is, um, that takes time to build up. For me, um, I was overshadowed many times when I was very young, so it's quite easy to slip into it. Okay. And um, uh, so, yeah, I, I just I don't, I don't remember what happens in trance. I really remember what happens in reading either. Mm. It's only if there's something that's that can teach me or can teach students. You know, if there's something of benefit there, then then I remember. Otherwise, trance readings, I don't remember anything. Is it possible that some naughty spirit could creep in and... Uh, it is possible. I think it's how you approach it. You, you do need protection. And as you know, uh, one of my things is protection. You know, yeah. uh, I'm very hot on that. So if you're protected, that's fine. But you still need that trust with the guide that um, they uh, are going to leave when they say they're going to leave. They're not going to leave... Um, yeah. A, a back door open or anything like For that. For those who, who are watching and don't know, what do you mean by protection? 
Um, it, it's just to make sure that the only entities that you can trust that have good intentions yeah. uh, can approach it and then will approach. Right. So it's just fending those off, really. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Right. Have you um, have you experienced any ectoplasm? <laughs> Has that manifested um, from you <laughs> at all? Uh, or have you seen it from someone um, else? I've seen it, and it, it can take various forms. Um, it can look cloth-like, it can look like steam, mm. um, it can look like liquid, uh, can appear very solid. Mm. So when, in physical mediumship, when, when uh, forms use it, they can appear very solid. And if you've ever been to a physical uh, circle, mm. you know that when they form and uh, they ask to touch you, you can't t reach out for them, right. but they'll ask for permission. And uh, they're very solid, very warm. Um, so because, again, people have ideas that it's going to be, you know, ghost-like, transparent, cold. Uh, it's not like that. So are you telling me that you've seen the medium sit there, mm. this cheesecloth-type misty ectoplasm comes out and builds up into a person? Yeah. As yeah. we know it. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. If you look at within the body, um, ectoplasm itself doesn't exist, but it's made up from different chemicals in the pancreas. Mm -hmm. So when you're going to work, those chemicals will mix and then it comes out of all the orifices. Okay. And uh, so, yeah, so it can appear in different forms. Right, and what happens, I mean, you're saying you can't touch it, mm -hmm. but at the end of the session, mm -hmm. Where's it go? It's, with, it's withdrawn <laughs> back into the medium's body. It uh, depends on the sitters as well, because if sitters have it, then spirit will use uh, um, some of their energy as well. Right. So have you actually seen it withdraw back into Yeah, the yeah. Yeah. I've seen it um, at physical circles and um, I, I was very fortunate when I was young because um, spirit manifested in the home. Uh, when I was trying to get to sleep. Uh, it was always very entertaining, wasn't frightening at all. Um, so, uh, yeah, I've had uh, many years experience. Is it something that you like to achieve, that you can produce ectoplasm or...? I'm not sure. I know the gift is there because it happened when I was young. Right. Um, to go that way, I'm not really sure. I don't think um, that's the way um, my path lies. Yeah. Uh, it would be nice, but I think it lies in a slightly different direction. Just like one more question <coughs> about this. Is, I mean, back in the olden days, you hear about the olden days mm. and different generations, yeah. I've heard that trance was, the old fashioned school was more predominant, the trance was more. It's not like it is nowadays, Leo, that's um, what I'm getting at. <laughs> yeah, I, I think there are fewer trance mediums yeah. uh, nowadays, and again it can take uh, various forms from um, uh, heavy trance uh, to slight overshadowing, mm -hmm. um, so there are all different gradients of it mm -hmm. as well. Uh, when I do addresses um, for demonstrations, I go into very light trance, mm -hmm. and uh, when it first started to happen, uh, I I used to have to make sure that I would grip the rostrum or no, the rail I because I could feel myself swaying sometimes and think I'm going to fall off the platform yeah. or that. Um, so I used to take quite a tight grip. Um, but it's amazing because, you know, uh, when you're doing a demonstration, they say, right, you've got five minutes address or ten minutes for an address, and I just tell them ten minutes, that's it. Mm. And invariably, um, it lasts exactly that time. Uh -huh. oh. You say that's not your path. What is your path? Do you foresee? Um, I think to teach, uh, I think to, to be an evidential medium, it's very, very important that it's evidential mm -hmm. uh, because lots of people can say, well, you know, um, uh, to a 70 year old woman in, in, uh, in a demonstration, so we were, I've got your mum here, mm -hmm. you know. Um, that's that's fine. That isn't really evidence. So uh, evidence does have uh, it does have to be an evidential validation. Validation. When we spent time together, well, when mm. we came to pay you a visit mm. in your lovely new home, may I say? Thank you. Um, that, I mean, that's got history in itself. It's what, yeah. 400, 500 years old. Uh, yeah, 400, uh, they're about 1704, it was built. Yeah. Anyway, we struck up a conversation about UFOs. Yes. Now, I'm not really into that, Yeah. but it's interesting what you said. But h how did this um, interest come about? Um, again, with physical mediumship, you've got the skull experiment and, and uh, uh, where um, aliens, for want of a better word, um, did appear. Um, what, 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 can you just 
tell me about the skull experiment. Uh, the skull um, experiment, experiment. <laughs> lasted um, five years. It ended in 1993, and there were four members principally, and it was set up by Spirit. But also there was an extraterrestrial connection behind it as well. And um, the skull experiment was uh, done uh, not in a strictly scientific way, but it was to prove uh, uh, the phenomena of mediumship and physical mediumship and that connection between the two worlds. So it ran for five years, very evidential. Mm. Um, people like Edison came back, uh, they would have completely sealed rolls of film, new from the factory, mm. uh, placed in boxes, locked, everything checked, and Spirit would uh, do drawings, um, writings, write in different languages, uh, you know, and uh, Edison came through with uh, an explanation and then signed it, and that signature was checked okay. with his signature in the state. So, all genuine, lots, lots of evidence again in, in different ways. And that got you interested in aliens and UFOs? Uh, no, I saw, I saw uh, a UFO when I was very young. Oh, you um, did? Yeah, yeah uh, about seven or eight. And this, this was obviously not a helicopter, it was still, it was quite large, absolutely silent and I just knew there was a connection there yeah, and uh, a lot of mediums now admit yeah. that there is an extraterrestrial connection. Yeah. Um, if you think, uh, I don't mean to degrade them by saying animals, but um, animals have got souls so aliens are just souls in a different body. Mm. Mind you, then again, see I'm not a great believer because I haven't experienced it, mm. then again I wasn't a believer in this because yeah, <laughs> I mean, you grew up with it. I, mediumship and spiritual awareness never hit me till my thirties. Yeah, yeah, and I think, well, that's true. And if you're a medium and I believe in you, and you're telling me UFOs and aliens are true, then I think, yeah. well, why not? You know. Yeah. Um, but I, I was going to say, I sat in a circle once, and I saw a lizard. Yeah. And I said to the guy taking the circle, I told him, and he said, "Yeah, that's my guide. That's one of my guides, a lizard." Yeah, reptilians. <laughs> absolutely. Some of them can be huge, you know, 10, 11, 12 foot tall. Yeah. Um, absolutely huge. If you think about um, life on this planet, and if we were the only ones in existence, uh, then it, it's doubly a shame what we're doing to the planet, you know, how we're ruining it. Mm. But if you think about um, I think they said there was around, in our galaxy alone, there are around 17 million planets mm. which could hold life, broadly similar to, to uh, the atmospheric conditions on this planet, but some slightly different. Mm. And there are billions upon billions upon billions of galaxies, mm. and the chances of nothing ever existing anywhere else um, no. you, you've, you've just got to work it out. So yeah. even if there's one other race there, Mm. Um, which there isn't, mm. you know, but yeah. So what have you done with this interest of yours? Have you joined groups or do you go to discussions and um, anywhere else? It? Well, as you know, uh, I'm a member of the ASS MPI, which is the American uh, Society for Standards and Mediumship and Psychical Investigation. And uh, there's a, um, oh God, I forgot his name. Um, there's a very famous, um, guy that worked for the for the Ministry of Defence over here and um, he he's also a member. Um, what, of the American Standard? Yeah. Is he? Yeah. I, I can't think of his name. Funny enough I can picture his face, I can't think of his name at yeah. the moment. Um, but um, so he's joined the society, there are other peoples there as, as okay. well. But you can find a lot of information. One interesting thing on um, uh, do you remember the Malaysian plane that went down, yeah. the 370? Uh, I, I was quite interested in that because there's absolutely no trace. Now, they say they found wreckage. Personally, I believe that wreckage was faked. Um, it disappeared without trace. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I was just trying to catch up on the news. And China, uh, in an event, uh, in trying to be helpful, mm -hmm published some pictures saying they'd found wreckage and they'd measured the wreckage from the satellite, some of it was 79 metres long, mm. and they published these photographs. Immediately I saw them, I knew they were UFOs because they were triangular, they had lights on. Mm. Um, so what I did, I took screen snaps of them uh, to put in a blog. Mm. 
within two hours those pictures disappeared Did they? an apology was made said oh um, uh, of some kind mm. and uh, they were never seen again and I think they just weren't vetted I think somebody in the Chinese government said look we found these objects here it must be the plane mm. um, many countries in the world uh, openly admit you've got places like Mexico um, India, Pakistan, that won't play the game now, and the game is basically between Russia, China, mm. us, the Americans, saying that there is uh, no such thing as UFOs, mm. um, when in fact we've been actively working with them since the late 40s, mm. you know, just prior to 47. Mm. Um, you know, so uh, it, you can look on the web, and there, there's, uh, uh, I think it was the mayor of, of Mexico. Yeah. And uh, he, he was doing some sort of um, show uh, uh, talk in in the city, and various people started to turn around in the crowd, yeah. and uh, people from the platform were noticing as well. He then stopped and looked up, and as the cameras panned round, there were six UFOs flying in formation. Okay. Now Mexico published photographs, videos from people, um, from the police the army, the air force, they make no bones about it. So uh, that information really is out there. Mm. It's uh, one or two countries that are trying to control the whole thing mm. that uh, make it make it quite, uh, you, you know, they say there's, there's no evidence at all. Have you tried contacting, I don't like that word alien, you know? Yeah, don't, don't, know. don't prefer uh, um, uh, Great, ter- celestial beings. Okay. You see, but then again, people say, well, it's no such thing. Mm. But our guides, and who, you know, they're on a different dimension, aren't they? But Ab- I know absolutely. We don't look at them as aliens, of course. No, absolutely. So different dimensions do exist. Absolutely. But have you tried a celestial being to make contact with you, yourself? I, I don't actively make um, contact or, or ask for that contact, but they do sometimes appear. Do um, they? Yeah. I, I was sitting in a physical circle with um, uh, a lady, and uh, we had on video, um, you could very clearly see um, an alien grey or terrestrial grey. Mm. Uh, so they're quite active in it because, again, they all um, communicate by telepathy. And essentially, mediumship is telepathy yeah. with with another soul. So, you know, there's lots of connections there. Leo, we don't... Let's just... Because you are writing another book. Yeah. We're not here to promote people, but do tell <laughs> us about what you're writing. Um, <laughs> it's, it's a book about developing mediumship, and I was hoping to have it published uh, this time last year. Yeah. Um, it's taken a while to go, but it's a, it's a different approach to... to the way that most mediums teach. I teach and work very differently yes. to, to most mediums. So it, it's it's my experiences built up over a time. Uh, so some of it is inspirationally written, automatic writing. But the part that I'm finding hard is the part I've got to put thought into. Right. Um, but it's on development. Hopefully this okay. year it will come out. I meant to say we don't promote books, not people. Really. <laughs> but I think you'll have to come back and pick up on this UFO thing and... Uh, yeah, be pleased to, be pleased to. I'll try and bring some pictures and things um, that, that I, okay. I, I can get. Mm. Leo, always a pleasure. It is, always. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. And see you back here another time. Thank you, bless you. Thank you.